Peace. Yeah, hello everyone. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Nax Farm. We upload weekly videos that has to do with animal husbandry in general. Because I got a question that I just strictly into that business. 70% of what I do has to do with strictly corniculture, which is rabbit farming. Because I have other animals in the farm dogs, uh, chickens, and subsequently you'll be seeing weekly uploads that has to do with them. And uh, before we move in that deep, uh, my Muslim brothers and farmers, how was the salad break? Hope it was fruitful and whatever you just be grateful to God for the gift of life because it's just all about God. And please don't forget to click the subscription button, the notification button, so that when we upload weekly videos, please you'll be notified and please help share because I get I, st I keep seeing questions of things that I've addressed, like most people don't even share. So please help share. Uh, we'll be right back for today's weekly upload. For today, uh, what we have on ground, what we have to talk about has to do with identifying your breed, knowing what breed you want to get involved in, when, knowing what breed you want to go into commercially. Because I see, I see, I see people, uh, how will I put it? I see people going for a pet quality with the mindset of getting a major result, which is which is which is like uh, opposite directions. Now, what do I mean? I see people keeping small breeds that are supposed to be for pet shows and research purpose, and you're keeping them for meat. Like no, 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 no. Now, before I go in, there's something I want you all to understand. Rabbit farming is more complicated than what most people think. Do not go with the mindset of it's just rabbit. No, because. Comparing it to the yes, let me use the poultry industry. It is more complicated than the poultry industry, and that is why you don't see big farmers even abroad, even in the U.S. She will keep a little quantity. They don't keep it in large quantity because it's not that easy. Now, what do I mean? In the poultry section, we have uh, let me stick to chickens. We have broilers, we have layers, we have noilers, we have cockerels. Uh, then we have our normal local chickens. Now. I'm talking about the agri form of uh, poultry farming. People that hatch these birds are different from people that keep these birds for meat, are different from people that keep these birds for egg. Now, as a poultry farmer, you know which direction you want to follow into. There are companies that are into hatchery, that is the chicks we buy as farmers to raise for meat or for eggs. And there are companies that are into the meat line and there are companies that are into the egg line. Now. For rabbitry, you are like the three in one. Yes, the three in one. You produce your young ones, you raise them for meat, and you produce others yourself for show line, for breed quality, and whatever you can gain from them. So it's broad. It is very, very broad. And there are more breeds out there than what most people have in mind. And that's what we're here to talk about today because I will just try and make it as simple as possible. Now, in the rabbit industry or in the rabbit world or in the rabbit kingdom or in, the, in rabbit farming in general, there are three stages or three lines of rabbit. The small, or mid, the small breeds, the medium-sized breeds, then the large breeds. Now, you need to know what breed you have. Now, the small breeds, they normally have their range of weight. The medium size have their range of weight. The large breeds have their range of weight. Now, for the small breeds, you can see between 2 to 3 kg. Small breeds, 2 to 3, some 2 to 2.5, some 1 to even 2.5, depending on the breed. Now, for the medium-sized breed, we have 3 to 5 kg. Now, for large breeds, we have 5 to 6, 7, 8, 9. I have seen 10, 11, as much as 12 kg rabbits. Yes, I'm not exaggerating. I will play the video and you will see one. Now, in Nigeria today, there's a problem because people people are seeing rabbit farming like a soft landing where it's just something easy. You get two, three breeds in no time. They're prolific. They're everywhere. But at the end of the day, your purpose of going into rabbitry and the stock you have at two different things entirely now what do i mean by that you can't be going for meat line 
with small breeds. Please. You can't be going for meat line with small breeds. Now, if you go for meat line with small breeds, you are like somebody keeping local chickens, the uh, ecotype, full and ecotype chickens, and you want to attain or achieve broiler form of production. It can never be the same, please. So know your line, know your basis, know your stand. It is not the same because what the quantity of feed a good meat quality rabbit will eat to gain good weight, good flesh, is lesser because of the food conversion rate it has. For a small breed, it's going to take a longer time. Now that is the problem because you see people saying, what breed is this? What breed is this house? What breed do I have? This and that. Now, when you buy a rabbit, the best person to tell you what breed you have is the seller or the farmer you got the rabbit from. I repeat, when you get a rabbit, the best person in the position to tell you what he or she has is the seller or the farmer you got it from. Not Facebook, not WhatsApp, not YouTube, not Pinterest. The farmer you got it from. Because there is a big, big misunderstanding in this whole circle of rabbitry. Identifying a rabbit just by its looks, the phenotype alone, is like one step in five. It's white doesn't make it a New Zealand. It's grey doesn't make it an American chinchilla. It's hairy doesn't make it a pure angora. I'm trying to make you understand something because there are rabbits that people have that has been mixed with a certain breed and it's supposed to be tagged across breed, not a pure line. That is the misconception we have today. Now, back to what I was talking about. Small breed, medium size, and a large breed. Now, when you have a small breed, the best way you can identify the breed you have as a small breed outside the phenotype, it's for you to know the weight of your rabbit. You have an adult rabbit of say a year and it's just 2.5 kg. You don't need a, 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 a soothsayer or a pastor or, or someone to tell you what you have as a small breed rabbit. Even if it's white. Yes, even if it's white, even if it's grey. It's an adult. It's 2.5. You fed it well from the word go and at the end of the day it doesn't hit the size or the weight of a medium size. It's a small breed. Now a small breed which you don't know the origin so you tag it across it's a cross that is what it is you can't say because it's white with the pinkish eyes is a new zealand no please please no it's not a new zealand white and that is the problem we have today whoever has a white rabbit post it just post it online i'm like new zealand white for sale why because it's white it has the pink eye you don't know the coat texture is it standing is it fluffing backwards so there are so many things you check is, is, is a big misconception, a very, very big misconception in this industry. And people have been falling victim. And I am begging farmers out there, please. We should learn to be honest. Because one thing I've realized in this rabbit industry is if you create market for yourself, you will have serious crowd that if you are not careful, your integrity will be checked. What do I mean? You will have excess demand when you attract that market to yourself that you have to sell what you have just to make that money not being the right thing to do because i've noticed most people you've created that awareness just this demand for rabbits from you and at the end of the day you can't meet the demand you can't let the money go you won't be honest to your client you search for normal rabbits out there as long as it's white it's a new zealand uh there's a uh, the, there's a touch of uh, black on the nose you can call it a kali it is wrong please my co farmers it is wrong Farmers, please, before you go into rabbitry, please and please go and check what the breed standard you have or you want to go into needs to have. In Nigeria today, we have New Zealand, very good New Zealand, but we hardly see those New Zealands that hit five. What do I mean, hit five? Hit five kg. They normally fall between the range of uh, 3.5, 4.5. We hardly see five. It doesn't mean it's bad. It might be an issue of inbreeding along the line. It has dropped. If you can import rabbits, please import rabbits. Now, 
down below i'll put it uh, on the description button i'll put a web link where you can go and see breeds see commercial breeds and small breeds large breeds they know the breed you have it, it, it should fall in that line and know the requirements of such breeds and what those breeds are used for this topic i'm saying now is not something i can discuss in a month or something i can discuss in a week it's something i have to be taking step by step so this is going to be the first episode and for the first episode we're talking about small breeds small breeds know the breed you have because what most people have out there are dutch breeds yes dutch it's a, it's a very very common breed in nigeria as a rabbit farmer if you say you've never kept a dutch before i can gladly say maybe you're just this new generation farmers but back then every going up child had a dutch so please know your breeds yes now what breeds do we have in nigeria there are good breeds in nigeria and there's a misconception of this breed in nigeria that a lot of people have been injured and is what is dropping their breeds market it doesn't mean the breed is not good hyla breed the hyla breed is good i've seen good hyla farmers down below I'll keep i'll keep two farms i know i can recommend anytime for hyla breeds just be, i'm sure of their source they're good because they took their time go 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 that far to get what they are having today and what most farmers are enjoying today so i'm not advertising their product because they are paying me no i'm saying it because they are good in what they are doing they have the breed you need in terms of highlight to expand your farm now one is in the west one is in the north i don't really know anyone in the east for now most people i know in the east i can't really say i can give them 80 but these two i'm recommending i can give them 90. It doesn't mean they are highly totally pure, no. Understand this whole thing now. But the highlight they have for meat line is something I can recommend to any farmer. They have good highlights from good sources. Why am I saying they are not pure? It's not a recognized breed. The highlight on its own is a crossbreed. So whatever highlight you have, have it behind your mind, it is a crossbreed. It is a mix of uh, a New Zealand and a Kali with some modif modification in their gene, which for today nobody knows. But what they're supposed to be is for meat. So if you decide to rebreed those meat line, it doesn't get to the level of the PS, which is the parent stock. It only, it's only going, going to drop. But they will still give you good meat rabbit. Now, for today, I can't say I've done much justice for today's issue, but subsequently, go through the description i'm going to drop below for breeds read them digest them next week i'll be giving you little little things you must know in selecting a breed for your commercial farm next week please hang in there it's going to be a good one thank you have a lovely day happy farming